Hello everyone, my name is Karen and welcome back to the very first discussion table here for the Bodyhood Brawl League Season 3. Remember we did have two of these uh, for the Bodyhood League Season 2 and here we are back again for Season 3. With me today I have Kiran Paul, Hole Poker and Enyer. Say hello guys. Yeah, hey. <laughs> this is uh, Hole Poker speaking. This is Kit and Pa. You may... Notice my voice from my Twitch stream as well, since I'm now suddenly a Twitch streamer, aren't I? And a new... Wow, that's good. Yeah. Sure. Even some hidden commercials here, that's nice. <laughs> uh, ser ser yeah, seriously though, <laughs> you should check out Kinopos channel. It's good if you want to check out PVEs and how to fail terror tests and stuff like that. I recommend it as well. Uh, so guys, let's talk a little bit about the Bodyhood League Season 3. There have been a lot of changes. Everyone knows this if you're watching the, the various matches here and you might have found that some things have changed. But for us players, it's uh, almost finished up with the first Qualifier League and then we're going to have an upper and lower division which we missed out on on Season 2 and that's going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, what are the biggest changes for you guys with the rule set? Well, first of all, I feel like the uh, moving, like we moved from, you know, contest to to exhibition. I feel like that's probably the biggest change, at least one of them. It's so it's, it's so different because last time I was really playing a lot more carefully, and this time I'm just going all out. You know, I don't have to care about any out of actions. I just move on out and you know, see what I can kill. And I guess yeah, it's kind of nice just not having to play as carefully. It just speeds things up. I think so that's nice the style of the pvps really has changed a lot yeah i feel that as well i feel that i am personally i am trading units much more now than i was earlier i think i'm more fun to play against because in season two all i did was just punish people with double dregs and as soon as <laughs> and then just go in for the finishing blow if they get close it was really yeah. boring to face me. None of you three did that in uh, the first uh, first league, mm. but uh, I'm sure the players who did really didn't like facing me at that point. I do. I do feel like this change has moved from like moving up. Like there's there's certain types of warbands, and before I, I think a lot of play played more, you know, more of the defensive types of warband. While now we have seen more, you know, kind of offensive warband types instead coming. Coming up, so I know my warband, one. for example, is like all damage. <laughs> Kid Impulse warband. That's what as I was well. about to just played, and if you guys watched or you will see, I took adrenaline rush on my henchman. I never would have done that in a contest. Yeah. Uh, so I took adrenaline rush because I have four four red pills on the henchman. Adrenaline rush lets me do two two handed attacks. So yeah, you can play much more offensive builds because it's like yeah, who gives a shit. Yeah, that's opened up a lot, so I, I feel like that's another positive. So if you I fall like out of action, it's just an exhibition, so you can play a lot like sloppy and loose and offensively. Yeah. So in general, we all feel like this is a good move? Well, there's, there's one thing that's been bugging me, and that's kind of the excitement of going into a game. I feel like when it was like you know a contest match, I was like always at the edge of my seat, no matter the competitor. I knew that everyone was a threat because injury rolls could be really punishing, uh, and they did indeed punish me pretty hard. So, I wouldn't say it's like less enjoyable, but I kind of miss that excitement, you know, losing people and I don't know. I got more attached to my characters for some reason as well, during this, you know, the guy with no eye, with no eye, and like you know. <laughs> it was <laughs> also kind of comeback mechanic actually in the last game or in the last uh, Bodyhood Brawl League, because now you have kind of hermetic. Um, sealed war bands and i i don't really like that thing that the war bands are kind of sealed you can't actually change F anything on on a war band from outside yeah and it's the you mean that it's going to be the same characters every single game because it would be foolish to bring in a, a reserve character because you need to focus the xp on the the 10 that you have no, it's it's more that uh, you won't lose any items, but you won't gain any items. And in in the last league, there were so many uh, possibilities how a match can go, and it was 
Nah, it, it was much more cooler that it, it was not so try hard. Wow. If, if you know, wow. you knew, okay, <laughs> I, I can face someone who is better than me and I got beaten up and it, that's okay. But, but now it's every harm you, uh, your warband suffers is from yourself. I think we still had Karen get the extinguished title of, you know, try hard last last season still. Hey, I didn't. <laughs> I think that should go to Kiran Pot, to be honest. You know, I played a very, very fun uh, kind of weak warband and I did decently well with it. Yeah, well, <laughs> so to, for I, me, it, it's definitely you guys kind of touched on it. I, I really like these which is a different issue entirely, but you literally had to go get words down. Now in exhibitions, kind of like you talk, it's like, what's the point? And I think that added to some of the excitement of contests. Like you guys have talked about the out of actions and the tension of that, being able Maybe, to actually yeah. map and you had to take specific units into contest, PVP contest, so they'd get XP. You know, now it's like, yeah, who cares? I get all my stuff in exhibitions. So... It's just not nearly as exciting and you don't get as attached to the units. And I think that's kind of a shame that we've lost all that. Let's actually talk about that because I don't feel that the objectives is necessarily tied to exhibition or context. I think that the problem might be that they made a ruling for the objective here for season three, which is that you only get a single point if you manage to get the objective, which means it's virtually yeah. meaningless for people to go for it. Mm. Very true. That's very true. And it was so super important and really made the the difference between a good and a very good player in BBL2. And now the objective is just trash. Yeah, it would be really nice to see like for the next season, having the objective, you know, the reward for actually getting objective just buffed a bit. Get it like, make it worthwhile. You know, you, sometimes you really have to work to get the objective complete. Sometimes it can be really difficult to be able to complete them. So actually getting some good reward for it would be nice, I feel. And, then, you know, this is what's funny. The whole reward table, part of the big argument is people weren't playing to win last tournament. And I can speak personally. I, I've cared even less if I've won during this tournament because of the roll table and, like, maybe 50% of the rolls or maybe even more being, like, utterly useless, in my opinion. Then I'm like, win, lose, eh, who gives a shit? Where it, when it was a contest, I'm like, I have to win so I can get the secondary, I don't lose units, I can get more loot. <laughs> so it was more important for me to fight to win. Now I'm like, eh, yeah. who cares? I'll get another vet at that point. You know? so I'm, <laughs> I'm, and maybe that's what they wanted, me, the veteran, to be more casual. I don't know. You if haven't had the, the best goal, of luck. I think it worked. <laughs> I wanted to bring in something. I know that uh, I made this suggestion before, and other people have made this suggestion. And recently, Paranoia made it in the Discord suggestion box, which was saying that maybe you should not have kills be worth any points. Maybe just the win should be worth a set amount of points, and then the objective could be worth a set amount of points. But just getting rid of the kills being a factor. Just make yeah. it a tiebreaker, maybe. But then you are not penalized for facing. Um, Warbanet has a very high morale, which means they're going to take a lot of casualties, or a Warbanet has a very low morale. Yeah, true. Yeah, I really like that idea. I mean, uh, uh, in More Time Madness 2, you see how good it works. I mean, everyone is rushing uh, to get the objective. Yeah. So in More Time Madness 2, of course, it's um, instead of kills and everything, you get one point for winning the match and one point for completing the objective. So even if you lose, if you get the objective, you know, you're still at the, you know, still getting the same amount of points. Because getting the objectives, like, it's no easy feat, once again. Like, it's, it's really hard sometimes. So you should really be rewarded for, for managing to complete one. And it adds, it also adds, like, more flavor to the gameplay, going around, you know, scattering your warband across the battlefield, finding the word stone, or going to the their wagon and back. Like, that's, that's all hard to, like manage to do so yeah, I think again make it worthwhile i think that's very important to prevent camping too like if it's especially words don't rush and i've said this ever since i literally did my first tournament and my opponent camped against me i was like can't there be a way around this like to make them come out of their shell and if you made it uh, the words don't rush or secondary like that is the point of mordheim go get some stones 
So if you made that just as much as a win, then it, I think it really deters camping. And it gets back to, I don't know if we're ready to talk about it, but um, the crush their will being so tough in every division, and then people putting the flag inside a chest, which was is kind of annoying. But hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about this, like with the flag thing that you just mentioned, like getting the flag from your warband, putting it in a loot point, and then going out to battle. I feel like that's kind of... It's not game breaking, but it's not that you know a fun way to play. I feel like having the decision between either having your banner stay at your wagon or taking it with you to battle is a good choice to have before you do any battle on any map. I like that decision, but now that you can just put it on a loot point anywhere, it just kind of removes the entire choice in the beginning of each match, and I feel like that's kind of a shame as well. I think we should mention here that uh, in the uh, but in the season two, there was a specific rule against camping, but there is not one in uh, season three here. Yeah, I guess we want to get that back then. What do you guys think? Actually, yeah, you want to make the secondary worth it so they don't camp. And yeah, I mean, just fair play is to not camp. But yeah, it should be. You should make rules that make people not want to camp, I guess is what I would say. You, go ahead, Anir. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, I think about camping, simply the rule, because it's it's just it's not fun. I mean, I had once I had a training match against some other guy, and he camped in a house, and we had a war band of ten guys, and only four guys were playing at uh, a single time because the space was locked up so much. It's just not fun, and it drags the game in, into length and stuff. But with the um, hiding of the um, of the idol, I think it it's just kind of stupid because you give up lots of movement for just a single point the enemy isn't really interested in it the, in the end yeah i just okay. feel like it's um usually for me like when i consider it i feel like it's almost always a superior play to just take the banner and just put it somewhere essentially and i feel like if there's just one choice then it's less you know the more choice the better if you have to make like a hard decision i feel like that's more more fun Usually, I think it's true that you need to take the idol early on as well because it's at this point, uh, especially in the earlier games, the idol is worth so much. Like you can lose one guy and the idol, and then you're uh, losing the game. So it's so important to to guard that. That's why yeah. I have a very simple up. fix for that, and I've mentioned this numerous times. We, we can adjust the route threshold. There's no reason for Warband 5 versus 5s, where one person out of action grabbed the flag, it's over, hold to like 10 or 20%. I think it'd make... The early matches can be kind of fun in a way. So just say, hey, way Warband rank 0, route threshold's 10%. So then the flag isn't even such an issue. It's really easy fix, I think. I did see the flag as an issue, though, like, personally. Like, in all of almost all of my early matches, like, my opponent took my flag... And it was quite natural because my my whole team had like heavy armor, so I had I had like no movement whatsoever, and everyone else had six movement. I had about four. I could move nowhere. They could move somewhere, right? So if they couldn't take the banner from me, I would have had a huge advantage in terms of armor, and that's essentially HP. So maybe I could kill one of their dudes in three attacks. They had to get like five or six in or something like that. So I do feel like having the option to take the banner and it actually like mattering somewhat is a good thing. And I also like the dy dynamic the kind of dynamic play in the you know in the in the first matches that you play because it had such a big big impact and it kind of changed the way you saw that okay yeah maybe I don't want to move to this location because then he can go and grab my flag. Maybe want to keep my leader back so he can I don't know. You, you had to kind of think and kind of you know move around the fact that the opponent could just move ahead of you grab your flag, and then you'd be at a, at a disadvantage. I, I like that about it, actually. I feel like it was kind of good. Do you guys feel we could move on a little bit and talk about, about the reward list? I also mm. uploaded an image here for you guys to watch if you've forgotten what they were, but I'm sure you haven't. There's been a, some discussion on this already. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, obviously, 
um, is kind of unbalanced, right? Of course it is. Oh my god, it is. <laughs> and we should say that... Uh, actually, let me bring up um, a kind of fun document to explain this for everyone, which is a document that's showing exactly what kind of rewards everyone has gotten so far. And naturally, Aenir and Kiripa will be a bit upset because, as you can see here, they have had some of the worst luck in the entire tournament when it comes to rewards. Particularly the veteran reset. Yeah, that that veteran reset is insanely <laughs> annoying. <laughs> yeah, I just this table just goes to show. I don't want to sound mean, but they didn't really quite understand the mechanics. I don't think is what this table shows. That I mean, I mean, they're do um... they not realize you only get one. Like I don't understand. Yeah, there there is there are three XP kind of XP rewards in the table, which is plus one difficulty, um, extra PvE and hired sword. And the gap between those is is so huge. It's like uh, next PvE plus one difficulty brings you about ma maximum of 10 XP. A hired sword is about 24, I think, XP. And the extra PvE mission could be about 60, 80 XP or <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, it also unlocks uh, things a lot faster. You know, it's like an inbuilt plus one, uh, plus one difficulty as well as XP on all of your current units and all of your future units since you unlock mm. things further. And since you unlock things further, that's what I mean. Like if you unlock, if you just get it once, you unlock the brutal missions one uh, mission earlier that's the same as getting the next pv plus one difficulty yes yeah. by that which in this is feel like all, starts yeah. to become a problem only because this is a capped number of game leagues as well which again it's still a problem but if everyone got to level 10s with a full 10 be such a problem but this league's not allowing that that's why i think it's a really extra problem mm. yeah and w w when we're talking about that you cannot get to level 10 there is one big glaring issue here that has been brought up before the tournament and during the tournament and it's going to be a massive bother for players that don't go down this route which is the last god talent tell us a little bit about that we have two of the players here that have invested heavily into Last Got Talent, Aenir and Holpoker. Yeah. And you have two players who have not invested in it at all yet, Kirenpa and myself. <laughs> yeah, well, when I first looked upon the Last Got Talent thing, I just thought that it was way too powerful. And not going Last Got Talent, I just felt like, you know, it was kind of equal to gimping myself. So for me, it was kind of natural just going for Last Got Talent immediately. And... I'll be getting two Lasker talent guys, and I feel like it's the strongest play to make because it just, you know, you get more skill points, you get your, your you know, offensive points earlier, more strategic points early. It's such a heavy just boost to your entire warband. It's insane. Yeah, for me, it's like I actually went for the Let's Get Talent guy because it replaces my champion and it fits best in the warband I wanted to play. And it's the only way for the mercs to get a decent melee hero in, which has some levels, of course, and then all the benefits on top. And it's so strong, it makes me smile. <laughs> can can you, Karin, just point out exactly, like, literally lay out why it's so broken? I don't know if we've really done that in one place. It's so... kind of been chatted about, but all the benefits, especially when you consider the insane uh, hired sword rank 3 henchman and why that breaks it all. All right. So, first off, um, let's go talent. When you do get it on a henchman you're also having re less required XP to get to level 10 since henchmen leveled up faster and the less good talent uh, still abides by that. And that is quite a lot of XP. I think it is 20-ish uh, or something like that, which is basically around three games uh, that you get uh, much earlier. You also get this massive power boost, Alice's. You get, when you do master less good talent, you get plus 14 skill points. That is a whole lot more than anyone else has at that point. Remember that uh, a typical 
hero would have around 12 at that point while the last catalog will have 20. So it's quite a big difference. And you get all of the red pills and the blue pills much faster, and well specifically the red pills. So you get uh, uh, 8 red pills really early, at already at level 6, and that's going to take your heroes to get up to level 8, so you can sort of boost that power. And uh, since the first two heroes you get, they could get to level 10, they are most likely going to do that if you play well. But the third hero's choice, if you really, really maximize it, it will get to around level 7, level 8 before the playoffs. And the fourth hero's choice, he will get to level 4 or 5. Meaning that if you take a last god talent, you can end up with a level 10 hero and a level 5 henchman. And if you skip it for the fourth hero's choice, and if you skip it, you just get uh, a level 5 hero and a level 10 henchman. And that's going to be a huge power boost. Plus, remember that last got talent, you get more attribute points than normal heroes. That's often forgotten. And uh, since we have this reward table, you're sort of subsidizing last got talent as well, since the biggest drawback with last got talent at the moment is that your henchmen will be worse. But there are two clear rewards here for 10% chance that you can actually get your henchmen to be at, at about the same level as someone who's not investing in it. And that's pretty much it. Do you guys want to fill in anything about that? Yeah, that pretty much is why everyone's saying, or at least us veteran, and I said right even before it started, this is what it, it, you have to take it if you want to be competitive. So, And then that gets back to some war bands, Witch Hunters and Undead, you know, they don't have very good options there. And it just kind of things up from the get-go, I yeah, think. Yeah, particularly the Undead. I feel like they're really poor in this uh, particular format. And they're going it... to struggle. Paranoia, I think, had... Isn't there a bug? You can get Mastery with just... Because I think Paranoia's henchmen were only level 4 and they had Mastery, Lads Got Talent. You don't it's, have to be level 6. It's not a know. bug. It's specifically so that you take Lads Got Talent. The basic one costs 2 skill points. To master it, it also costs only 2 skill points. But that's fine since you get 2 less skill points overall uh, compared. So it's like it's counting as 4 skill points but it, you can get it much faster, which makes it so that Lasko Talent is even more broken than people realize, is you can get it mastered at level 4 indeed. For some, no, for some, for some henchmen, we should say. Some henchmen, uh, like the Sealot, he gets uh, 9 intelligence, if you focus on that, for the mastery at level 5-ish, almost halfway to 6. But some units, they get it already at level 4. Particularly the mercenaries. That's yeah. true. Yeah, but I I think a, another effect uh, which which the format brings with with it uh, is that the um, most warbands are much more better planned out than they were in BBL two. Yeah, you have a much greater chance of planning the warband out. Like if you watch my first episode, for instance, you would see exactly what uh, amount of XP you will be getting uh, plus all of your kills and that can help you plan out just how many skill points you want on this or this character and which characters you're going to take so that gets that back helps. to like the hermetically sealed war i guess what you're implying is they're not dying in contest anir so you know exactly what you're going to get by the end is that what you're i guess that's the point you're making on the one side yes on the other side it's the really i I feel like it's the frustrating uh, thing that if you're unlucky once, uh, you can um, you can kind of cripple your warband, and you're the only person who is able to inflict harm on your warband. I've had out of actions in PVE. Just I don't know about you guys, but I have yeah. had, I have one, and I have an injury on one of my guys. I think that um, before I met Karond. I think that the computer had had me like you know had killed more of my dudes than the actual players had. So, <laughs> nice yeah, I, out. <laughs> I actually managed to uh, avoid a single out of action till now. Mm, cool, uh, that's good. Yeah, it will come later, and then it will be death. <laughs> yeah. Summarize this. Like the irony is, I know they the big goal of the host is to kind of neuter us veterans that's been like flat out just said they want to make it more fair and level yet 
really ironically in the foot because only veterans kind of knew about lads got talent and things like that even though i tried to tell everybody immediately not everyone or even could do it given undead or things mm -hmm. so it's kind of ironically just kind of made another power like power yeah they, they, they're giving us the tools to just make these other powered warbands they should really stop doing that i think that like, they, absolutely. remember that they have lowered us a little bit if i can be included in that number which is they are limited um, the difficulty of your PVEs. And that's specifically targeting people that are good at PVEs. It limits their XP. But you're pretty much right, all of you, in saying that we have other tools available to us. And I think that's going to be very much showing in the playoffs, since some of us will be level 10 with a lot of our units. And uh, some other players will definitely be very far away from that. And it would have been better if we have all, all reached a cap, I think. Yeah. Can, I ask, can I ask a question then? I, I don't want to take yeah. over again. Am I taking over again? No, no, no fine. just keep going. How do you guys feel about... There's a big big change between the two. In the previous one, we rewarded losers. and this one, we're rewarding victors. Do we still want to do something? Or if you do the reward table better, you th what, what do you guys think about that as far as what's changed there? Yeah, well, obviously the reward table is a bit, as I said before, it's, it's just unbalanced. It needs some, some changing. And I feel like the first thing is kind of limiting the extra PvE. It is, a, it is too good, obviously. And I think the way to do that, uh, generally, is just give, give us two PvEs in between each match. Uh, that, that just sorts out so many issues. It sorts out the issue with the extra PvE being that strong. It halves its efficiency in, like, you know, and how good it is, essentially. And also, it makes it so that everyone gets to level 10. And then we'll just have a much better tournament play. The elimination phase will be much better. Basically, that's the way to level the playing field more, I feel. Anyone well, agree I, with me? <laughs> or disagree? Kind, kind of. Kind of. I mean, I think uh, these are two different things. On the one hand, the loot table, because the loot table Karen posted, for example, in the BBL discussion or suggestion, I think, uh, the reward table, sorry, the reward table. I really like that one because I think if you want to reward the winners, you need to have these kind of small rewards. And rewards that Karen suggested there were... Um, um, they really have an, effect, in, an impact on your next uh, PvP mission and they can really help you. But I feel like this extra PvE, it's just too strong. And if you would adjust the other rewards to be as strong as the extra PvE mission, it's uh, BBL3 just, uh, BBL2 just in the other directions that winners are rewarded with something that is worth an extra PvE. And um, I think the two PvEs or one or two PvEs in between, it's, it's a thing of the style, of course, how you want to play the league, but I'm pretty sure um, the impact of the style will show uh, at least in the playoffs. I did yeah. bring up the, the suggestion I had on the screen here and you have the image in front of you as well if you want to check it up again. Just as Aenir. I feel like you don't have to remove the extra PV, but there's, like if, if you do want to keep it, there are several ways to keep it in and not have it as good. First of all, I think it's kind of ludicrous that we still have it at 10%. 10% chance to get an extra PV, that's way too strong. I would like you know, just bring it down to 5%, maybe tops. That's a good way. And then my other option, I think, is kind of like just... I, I do like the extra PvE as a reward. I know that it's, yes, it is too powerful in the current format, but I, I think if you just introduce a few things, it's going to be way less impactful. What if um, you... There's been talk about some options for that. Like, for instance, you set um, a limit so that you have a list of all of the rewards you can get, and then you can only get them once. And once you've gotten all of them once, you can get them twice and so forth. That would definitely limit uh, the possibility of uh, getting, for example, extra, extra pay. But it will also make sure that almost everyone gets it if you get enough wins. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the synergy with the reward table is not good of that... Um 
of that rule. I, I think it's basically it's a good thing, uh, but not with the current uh, reward list. Yeah. And another way could be to that you don't actually reward people after each win. You reward people according to the position they end up in the table after the first league is done with. Yeah, That's what I was actually going to say if in our previous video we talked about when there was expected to be the winners and losers and then the tournament. I remember we really had a lot of good points about okay, let's uh, just reward it when it comes seeding time. You could pick your opponent mm -hmm. or where you were on the... You guys remember all that? Yeah. I mean, I think that could be something where, you, yeah, you save it all towards the end. So everyone's equal during the league portion. It's like, all right, you were first. You get this, this, and this reward. You're second. So it gives you that reward to still win. But the whole point, again, of why we had to change this is because it was contests and we're rewarding losing. So... It kind of lost the whole point of like we want to win just to win now, and yeah. then so you don't need to have like these really big carrots on a stick. You know, it should be something smaller, like yeah, like what we're talking about. So yeah, just like awarding at the end of each league phase will have less, you know, a lot less love rewards, and that that way, you know, you won't have people just stacking up on a lot of extra PVs like we have now. Um, Will it, be good. Will, will you guys excuse if we move forward a little bit and uh, let's actually talk a little bit about how the league has uh, progressed and not just uh, suggestions. And let's First. move forward here and let's take a look at the current standings of uh, mm -hmm. Qualifier League 1 here with Kirinpa in uh, the very top. And he just played a game uh, after this uh, table was uh, introduced and he won his last game against Krishu as well. Hey, what, the ten, what ten are point you, yeah, what, Sorry, are, sorry. what are your kind of uh, are there any upsets happening in Qualify League One? Any players who are doing particularly well? What would you have expected of Division One and uh, how has it turned out? I'll let you guys start and then I'll finish since I'm actually in it. So and we want to get your perspective since you are in it. If you don't Well, I mean so I know Paranoia might be new to some of you guys, but if anyone visits the forum, you know this guy has played a long time, and he's a very helpful, nice fellow. And I knew he would know low-level gameplay. The guy's always telling beginners how to start. So I expected a lot of Paranoia, especially with the Mercs. I think I predicted him for second. To me at the beginning, he lost the game night, and I think, by the way, Rant, which was he, starting out the gates was looking really rough. And then, of course, I met him right when he flowered into a <laughs> broken Lads Got Talent monster. And it was kind of an ambush map, and he beat me, and Game Night beat me as well. I try not to think about that battle. But I think it's, a lot of it's playing out the way I expected, except for Chris Cardiac. Given his Witch Hunters, I don't know what's happened to Chris. He has a lot of experience with the uh, Tier 10 leagues and the BBL, so... He's really kind of surprised me in this division. Yeah, I feel like you uh, summed it up pretty nicely. Like we, yeah, like it's but... it's, it's a bit about like I, I thought that Chris Carlick would have done better. I feel like Paranoia would have done better. I think I also tipped Paranoia like second place somewhere. Um, we're gonna come to you yeah. have done some predictions. Let's go. Let's go after that. Let's talk to let's uh, hold poker and me. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the qualifier. League 2 here, since we are playing in that. And so oh, yeah. That turned out. And it's almost finished. It's only one game left here. Quist against Abaddon. Yeah. And the rest of them are finished. What are your impressions of uh, the Qualifier League 2 whole poker? Oh, uh, well, it's a lot to talk about, really. Um, I think the two players have really done really well. One player that we have to mention, first of all, is Nanashi. I think I pegged him at, like, I don't know, 8th place or something. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it turned out he was really good. He was the real underdog of this this entire tournament, in my opinion. Uh, and it just crushed everyone, almost everyone at least, and uh, took their third place. Yeah. So want, uh, well played, Anashi. Really. I would, I would want to give big props to him as well. I know I, I had this uh, conversation with him prior to him playing a game. The first game he played was against Quist, and I was saying, Anashi, you're going to go in here as a big underdog and most people are going to expect you to win two games total in this league. So <laughs> just go out and show them that you're made of better stuff. And then he has yeah. started winning like crazy and he's played really well. He was really good in playing against me and really good against playing whole poker as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt yeah, like big really grabs awesome. from me as well. Mm. 
And he had some really good potential. Like, really, like, when I played, I just felt like the danger. He did, like, a few newbie mistakes, but when those are out of the window, like, he's going to be such a such a force to be reckoned with. Like, oh, and I'm I dreading the, uh, the next league, really. I want to mention a short a little trivia here, which is that if uh, Quist manages to beat Abaddon in the last game, this league will be entirely hierarchical. That means that Karen, who is the top here, that's me, has won against everyone below him. Holprokers won against everyone below him and lost to everyone above him. And the same for every other player in the entire league. And I've never seen that before. It's kind of like a prediction of strength. Yeah. Of how you would expect it to turn out. But that it never really does. Very funny. In an RNG kind of game. And I, yeah. I just want to say, Nanashi, I know you watched my stream. I had you in fifth. <laughs> most of these guys okay yeah 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 it's been a big surprise and i mean i think he absorbs a lot of your youtube stuff and tr he's very involved yeah he's a very good player i think he's absorbed a lot of the content out there so he, he he's the new, reminds me of me yeah he's the new <laughs> younger flashier anier yeah, yeah that's right. even more flashy oh my god <laughs> He is, indeed. I just hope he doesn't have a baby this month or next month. Yeah, then he's going to win it all, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the whole thing. We're um, already planning the next. <laughs> I, I want to do another, I want to do another shout out here. I want to do a shout out to Ragnarokos. I think that uh, for the previous season, I always pegged him as a guy who was sort of a bottom feeder, who's going to be stuck at the bottom. And he was. And... Uh, I think that he's really upped his game. He's uh, he's much better now, and he's been doing a lot of practicing with uh, people from the main modern community and other Bodyhood League members, and he's really showing off. He has good moves, <laughs> and uh, to be honest, if I didn't have a better warband than he, he should have beaten me. He played better than me in my game against him. I feel like same here. Like he was really dangerous and really exploited some of my uh, my warband's weaknesses i was really surprised by ragnarokus and you know it was um, it was a really good game and it could honestly have gone either way if we were at the uh, same strength but i feel like i um with some good luck that i've had with my extra pvs i really had a stronger warband and that was a bit unfair yeah, so, yeah. i played ragnarokus before um too and i felt like the, it was uh, mainly some technical mistakes he made, but the basic strategy and stuff were um, quite well. And if he gets rid of those, he really can be a strong player. Let's move on to Qualify League 3 in the last league here with Anir being in it. Anir, tell us all about it. You can see the image here coming up. Clyde and Slaver topping, of course, and uh, the rest is history. I would have loved to win against at least one of Clyde and Slavia, and I'm missing Crowley. And I'm very, very glad that I managed to beat Verato because I think he's really dangerous. And that's his only loss too. He's doing really well for himself. Yeah, but he uh, has to play against Clyde and Slavia. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, <laughs> let, a short moment here to just mention that, yes, Crowley, who is a tournament veteran, he dropped out. Uh, involuntarily, I believe, uh, and <laughs> Sneaky High Elf was replacing him, and then we had a car accident with a new player called Gunmetal, and King Jiggy replaced him. So it's been uh, some uh, switcheroos going on here in the Qualifier League 3. It's it's a bit sad that Crowley dropped out, because now I feel it's a pretty divided qualifier into four players that will make it to the playoffs quite sure and for players that really have a hard time in this qualifier but with Crowley it would have been really a tough fight yeah I think Bubs could could maybe he has been had a bit of luck yes but he's also playing decently we should do a shout out yeah. to him and he has Raritar left to play so that's gonna be a key game who gets the he fourth is, place uh, he is the only player who at the moment has Slavia beaten so, yeah, um, that's true. Shout out to Bob, so. <laughs> May maybe if I manage to beat him, it counts like a win against Slavia. Then push your <laughs> luck. <laughs> I, I I want to do a shout out to King Jiggy as well. He 
Mm. He took over here. He he's only played four of these five losses, but uh, he seems to be very cheerful about everything, and I kind of like that even when you're losing. So I just hoping that he gets a win here. So he's not the uh, he's it's only him and V Fender that hasn't won a single game yet, and I hope his luck is going to turn around. So I yeah, I speak with sure. Rorator a bit too, and he says he has a very secret plan up his sleeve here for his battles with. Clyde and Slavier. So it'll be interesting to see how he builds his war. But he's, he keeps telling me he's got some secrets. And you know, from the last time we did this, I do put a lot of uh, faith in Rorator. I think he's a very good player. So it'll be interesting to see if he can I, get that I, fourth position or surprise some people. I even. think I actually casted Rorator against King Jiggy, and both of these two players went with the same strategy, which was they skipped the Sisters of Pair and went for double purifiers to start. I think he has oh, taken nice. two of them. Yeah. Yeah, let's see then. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, so, yeah, since you're talking about it, let's bring up your guys' predictions. That was oh, always boy. very fun to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I failed. I've taken the, the liberation here. There are not all of the groups are done yet. I mean, only the Qualify League 2 is almost done. And I have given out for the five players that it's already decided which, where they're going to end up. And nothing can rub that even for the last game and see how many rights you guys had. We're gonna we're gonna sum all of these points up um, later on in another discussion table. And of course, you're going to get your option to uh, gamble on the prediction for the upper and lower division. But for now, Does the winner get an extra PVE because I could use an extra PVE. <laughs> <laughs> the winner gets credit, Kirenpa. Credit. Okay. <laughs> Lots of credit. Um, yeah, you can get my golden cookies from last season if you want. <laughs> so, uh, Kerenpa is uh, four rights out of five so far. He's been really good with his guessing, I have to say. What's your secret? Impressive. Yeah, I distracted you. I'm sorry. Is this what we were doing? Yeah, I, I feel pretty confident about it. Yeah, I like. I got my pulse on the community. Indeed, <laughs> unlike, nice. unlike some of us. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, but I have to say that there really were some surprises. I have to say, in in all qualifier groups, Nanashi especially. But um, yeah, there's gonna, like... gonna be gonna be more upsets definitely. Mm. And of course, we 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 need to do a shout out here to Hole Poker's serial murder <laughs> style of writing his predictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his <laughs> And it's a terrible record so far. Like, if you really like look at each letter, there's a few ones that are pretty good. Like, look at the first one, for example. Yeah, I mean, not too bad, right? Well, <laughs> uh, not that my one... predictions are any better. <laughs> it's kind of one you put down after your first kill. Yeah. <laughs> Shush now. Okay, so, well, my predictions were obviously the worst. And I think that the uh, main reason for this is that I was a bit arrogant. And I thought that I would beat Karand, and I did not. So, and you could have done. I, I felt like uh, our game was a coin toss. You can yeah, see that game on my channel. Yeah, it was a really good game. I was a bit scared that you were like, you. in the middle to start off with. That was a bit like, and oh. You killed all of my heroes and my leader. Yeah, that morale though. <laughs> I have to say, dare you hold poker uh, being um, so confident to put you in the first place of your <laughs> qualifier. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, I, I thought it would be a close game, so I thought I'd had a fighting chance if I had some really good luck. So. I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Enyu. You put yourself in top spot as well. <laughs> well, after yeah. my predictions for the playoffs or for the elimination round in the last tournament were so terribly wrong, I didn't want to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about? For example, maybe the the strength of the various warbands. Uh, do we want to go into that? We mentioned that the undead is probably the very worst warband. I don't know if anyone here is going yeah. to disagree with that. I think they are much worse than everyone else, and the other five are 
there is a ranking there, definitely, and it could differ, but it's they're still relatively close to one another, unlike the undead. You haven't you haven't broken down among um, among warbands, which you did last time, and I wouldn't be surprised if Skaven and Undead aren't doing poorly. You know, um, witch hunters are probably doing well, mercs are probably doing well, sisters are always kind of middling. It's a good so. point. I will I will add that for our next discussion table. I haven't really calculated too much, but. I think from the basic score that we saw earlier in the group stages, the witch hunters are probably on top. Yeah. It's back to how you approach... I, I've said this numerous... You guys have seen my builds. If you watch my channel, I'm purposely kind of trying to be weird this time. And I yeah. think that plays a role, obviously. And since I have Skaven, I could have made it better and done the lads got talent and stuff. And I think, obviously, that's affecting more bands. And it gets back to... We've talked so much in circles about rank zero start and rank five mm -hmm. just pigeonholes you in to certain units you have to take certain units and the witch hunters for example start off way better with a templar than the mercenaries with like a young blood or the drag archer you know so i think that's a big part of what kind of indeed and then, and then you also have the only two undefeated players so far is uh, Myself, Karen, and Clyde, and both of us play Witch Hunters. And then you have the tournament's big surprise, Nanashi, playing the Witch Hunters. And then you had Chris Cardiac, who was expected to do a little bit better, also playing as the Witch Hunters. So you have both me and Clyde are being tryhards in this season. So that's going to influence our power as well. Well, the, the thing with the sisters' performance is that all sisters started in one group. <laughs> and that's definitely going to influence the rankings, I can tell you that. <laughs> but I think sisters are kind of a surprise um, in this tournament because they don't have those decent Let's Go talent. Not too bad, but not decent as well. But they shine uh, through their... Uh, very early mastered comments. Yeah, see, that's just it. Like, certain warbands... We talked about this even before we knew our warbands, and I'm like, you know, I think sisters won't be that harmed by this because you really don't want to cast four comets. You'll explode even at level 10. So getting a purifier later to get a mastery comet, you could still cast three comets, which is really dangerous. You see where I'm going? Like, they they get decent enough with the cap on the number of PVEs. So they have kind of a built-in advantage with the Sister Superior being good. Your fourth hero can still be really functional. You can also do Lad's Got Talent. So they had a lot more flexibility. We can't use consumables, so the Comets will probably be landing pretty hard. Compare that to the Undead, which are just like, sorry, you can't get a Necromancer. You know, you have a four-movement zombie, and... You know, you can only get ghouls. It's just such a contrast. It's and if you do get Alaska talent, you get two zombies, which are like four movements. So, so it's, a it's a very good problem. Point. Yeah. It's a very good point, Kinapa. I That's definitely good because that's without Alaska talent. So if you should, this is probably the only warband that could be relatively competitive without Alaska talent, Sisters of Sigmar. Since even your fourth hero, if that is a purifier, will be doing almost the same amount of damage as uh, a character that is uh, level 10. But I'm kind of sad we don't see any impressives this time around. I think they're a really fun element, so... Yeah, the, this is much more restricted. It's going to be the same for the DLCs now. I'm, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you, do you think we're going to see a lot of uh, DLC heroes coming in? I know a lot of these players might be tempted to go for two Let's go talents and uh, instead of just one, and that's going to probably exclude. Uh, it is going to exclude the DLC heroes for them, most likely. Yeah. What do you guys feel? Do you think we we're going to see a lot of DLC heroes? We didn't see a lot of them in the last season. Might be even less now. We should remember though that in the last season they got unlocked at Warband level five. This time it's unlocked at Warband level four. Yeah, like there are a few good ones that I could see. You know come into play. The Poison Wing Leather here is still really powerful. And I could see one wanting to have like maybe four henchmen of one type and just getting the last hero as a Poison Wing Leather here. Him being quite powerful regardless of his, you know, his level. Um, so I, I think there's some possibilities to get a few in there. But like on the order side, yeah, I don't know. 
when it comes to like if you compare the power of either, either a last of talent or a low level DLC hero, I just feel like they pale in comparison. I'm not entirely sure I agree. I think that yeah, I, if you get a DLC hero, like you said, last hero, but you really mean the third hero's choice, I suppose. If you have mm. three Lesko talents, it's more powerful that way. Anyway, uh, the, it's going to be a huge power gap in the upper division or the lower division if, compared to a player who gets two Lesko talent and the one who gets a DLC hero and a Lesko talent. But come the playoffs, you know, that uh, DLC hero, he will be rocking level 7, level 8, and that's 7 to 8 red pills. So it's only like one red pill in difference. And of course, there's going to be a few skill points as well, quite a lot, actually. But the versatility I mean, listen, of some of them could be used to, useful to have. Yeah, for so me, I'm, uh, I'm actively... I'll go. Go ahead. Um, for, for me, the um, DLC hero, the Wolf Priest, I will take one at uh, third hero choice. And it gives um, the option for another offensive uh, caster. And I think especially um, offensive casters are... Uh, the Wolf Priest as offensive caster doesn't suffer very much from the fact that he's third hero. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I'm taking, one, yeah. What, and I'm taking one as well, which is not a big secret. I literally just put it in the chat for BBL. But I'm taking the Doomweaver because... A, no one's taking it <laughs> ever. And B, I think uh, the one way I can try to salvage this nightmare uh, is to put down an idol of change and cost less, which makes my red pills go farther. That's the only thing. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to fail to cast the idol, and then I'll get <laughs> stunned, and I'll be out in the open and killed. But in theory, you know, you can kind of use that to make your red pills go farther. And I and I said I'm going to be really quirky and bizarre and try out different stuff. And it might help against uh, some of these comet spams and armor of righteousness. So, yeah, I'm going to try. And unfortunately, I think some of the other players who didn't do the lads got talent thing, maybe in the lower division, you know, they didn't realize the secret power might be taking them. But yeah, yeah, I think you'd kind of be crazy to take one in the format given, but. It's it's not too well, when I do think about it, it's not too bad because not everyone is gonna have the money to invest into all the skill points available to them, right? There's gonna be a like a gold shortage, uh, surely. So if you don't have to invest too much like too many skill points at all, like getting a wolf priest and just investing a few like the skill points extra from last got talent won't matter, and if the offensive points doesn't matter too much anyway because you're only casting so many spells each turn anyway. Well, of course, it's going to be a, a good option, a viable option, even. I think so, too. So uh, maybe you're not gimping yourself too much. I still think that the, the single last got talent is probably needed. But getting, like, um, one DLC hero, yeah, go for it. I think a big part of it, if I really, really, really wanted to win, would be, I think, Karn, you got two henchmen already. And that we've already talked about it, but that like super kind of breaks it with the lads got talent because it makes the upgrading of a one into a lads got talent. Obviously, you do a zealot archer probably, maybe a melee resist build, but that really really lessens the punishment. There's like no tr no, and then it really it's like why wouldn't you do that? I guess is what I'm saying. But not everyone got the extra henchmen, so yeah, and actually yeah. pretty few few players did and. And to be fair, it's I got two of them. Quist has one, Slaver has one, Nanashi has one, and Bubs has one. And uh, I got two, but I haven't used them in a Lance God Talent way, but these other four players, they might have. Hmm. It comes down to those um, an annoying rewards, kind of annoying rewards. <laughs> Uh, should we move on towards finishing this up? Let's uh, wrap it up like we did last time and every player gets to ask one question to the others and uh, then we just finish off from there. Which sounds, does that sound good? Yeah, sure. Should I start? Yeah. Uh, what is the one change that you want the most for the next season? Double PVEs uh, after each game for me. If you're only going to change one thing, change that. 
Okay. Kid and pull? Uh, you wanna... I want Anir to go first. <laughs> <laughs> That's his well, change for the next season. Actu actually, um, uh, yeah, double PVEs or Warband rank 5. Actually, if, if Karen already had, has wished for the double PVEs, I wish the rank 5. Because um, even with one PVE in between, it would have such a great impact. And I really think it is a good way to uh, cap the snowballing a bit. Yeah. You went first because I, I was hoping you'd say that. So now I can say something else. I would really like to go back to contests. I really miss contests. I know uh, it's more annoying with having to back up the files, but I really miss the intensity and secondaries mattering and all that yeah. that contest brought. Uh, should I answer my own question as well? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, so I'd really want objectives to get, you know, a bit of a buff in the reward they give you when you actually complete them. Maybe the only way you get to roll on the reward table is if you completed your objective. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I haven't thought it through yet, but you know, that could be one thing. It sounds really nice, actually. I would change crush their will then though. I re crush their will is just man, man oh man. On some maps it's easy. Yeah. Well, some deployments is easy, I mean. Ambushes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anyone else wants to ask a question here? In your kid and Paul? Yep, I, I'll ask my question. My question is about um, the BBL3 itself. It's like, I, I feel like Game Night wants to put up um, the BBL as a custom player league where everyone joins in and has fun and i feel it it doesn't work too great with um mixing up veterans and and custom players and i don't really know about the solution or maybe just some thoughts about about it i think it's the main problem actually the bbl has i think that Looking at the startup list here, and we have all three of them in front of us on our screen. You can't see it just now, but they are there. Um, you know that more than half of these players come from the Mora main community. And a lot of these players were recruited to the Body of Brawl League uh, by Kid and Paul and myself. And uh, even the players that are stuck here with the Body Hood uh, community, like for example Ragnarokus, who I commended, they are improving their game, so I'm not so sure that this veteran status will be holding on for too long. We even see new players coming in and they're starting to do well. And it's just going to be about how to take care of the players that are falling behind, like Muir's mm -hmm. Cat last season, or indeed King Jiggy and Chris Chu this season, and just uh, get them to play better and uh, boost their confidence a bit just talked to you about this yesterday and we can't i call it the swiss system but you call it the elo rating where it uh, instead of waiting for winners losers halfway through the league you get it where the winners are facing the winners way faster and losers facing losers so you can still do your random draw of who gets what warband and who plays who but you do little tiny divisions or even do like a giant tournament tree uh, people play, and then the winners continue to play winners, and the losers will then play losers. So, like, tries to get you kind of in your neighborhood faster, so then in theory people have more intriguing matches or more fair and balanced matches. I think that's something they can look into to try to separate out, you know, I yeah, don't know, the, the veterans a, from the newer... An extension that's actually, you play someone who has the same win percentage as you <laughs> all the time. Plan. Yeah, exactly. So if you not just if you win five games straight and you lose a game, you don't get to face someone who just lost a game. You face someone who has the same win percentage all the time. Yeah, I do agree with that. It sounds a really it sounds reasonable. It's at least worth trying out one tournament and see how it goes. Anyone uh, else want to answer Anish's question? Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about saying like you know smaller leagues, but that was kind of Kid and Paul kind of you know said it in his. Uh, yeah, and it's a suggestion as well, so I don't have anything more to add, really. So, I guess, what if it's my turn to ask a question, what what one thing would you 
do to make everything more fair. For example, we've thrown a lot of things around. Most recently, Karin said, why don't we just say everyone can only use white? That gets rid of the whole, oh, I didn't get a purple, I didn't get a blue. Just be like, you must use whites all the time, no matter what. Like, I, the Warband rank 5 gets you blues and purples faster. There's a lot of different ways to kind of maybe make things more balanced. What do you guys think as far as suggestions they can do? I be can it the loot table or starting or whatever. I can start with that. I think that the, the white weapons, I think it's it's a decent choice, but it, it has some, some uh, drawbacks. I realized that after I proposed it to you. Namely, for one, you know, if you do get rank five start, where impressors are more powerful than two heroes, but the impressors because they start with three hundred wounds instead of hundred wounds, but it's also that they get thirty uh, percent armor for free, so they're going to be really difficult to take down with only white weapons. Then you have uh, spells who still do, you know, the amount of damage. They're going to be overpowered in comparison. And you need to sort of elaborate with how this is actually going to take place. Like you have to take away offensive spells and impressives or something like that to make it decently fair if you're going to go for white weapons. But it could be another leveling factor, yes. Yeah, so at the moment, one of the things I feel that might be a bit unfair, although it is a bit random, the reward system really does lend some people, you know, a lot of power and others really nothing at all. Um, I really like the suggestion where you maybe either get the reward only after an objective or at the end of a league. Just make it a bit less impactful, but the rewards in themselves can still be really good. You don't have to make them worse. Just make them, you know, happen a bit less, a bit less frequent, really. Yeah, but then it's even more frustrating if you get the shit reward. <laughs> Well, then it wouldn't matter as much, right? Yeah, true. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Like, if you got, only get one roll, for instance, and you get extra PV and Aina gets another veteran reset, he's going to be really yeah, well, upset about that. But if, if you've already played, like, 10 to 20 matches, it won't really matter too much if you get one more PV. Ah, yeah, like, okay, it, yeah, you see it. Like it won't that. Yeah. be yeah, as impactful. Yeah, I true. mentioned, like, on our last... I, th I think it was discussion table two in the previous BBL where we had the give all the rewards right when the tournament because it again at the end of the day isn't this about the tournament the first whole point of the league one and league two is to get to the actual where people get eliminated point so if you save the rewards for then and don't make them too punishing I think that while trying to keep the league parts as fair as possible I think is a really good solution yep. I want to um, answer Kitten Post question at last um what i would like to see is a warband rank five start where you um so where you restrict the heroes and the henchmen kind of like it is now but you shift the order of the units you can hire or maybe put two units on a place so that you still have the progress but with a level five warband so you get a uh, much better loot and then um, a bad shop won't kick in uh, too much and stuff and you can give uh, the undead a necromancer from the start and stuff like that so that you can rebalance uh, the way the warband progresses Yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point, especially considering Undead's weak position in the uh, current format. Let me wrap this up with my question then. Um, I'm wondering a little bit, what can we all do to get more players interested in this? I think that for the Bodyhood Brawl League, I think there is a sort of issue that they have a rules... Uh, uh, a rules document right now that's just growing and growing and growing and uh, it's really difficult to get into for a new player. How can we get uh, more new players and sort of uh, simplify all of this, uh, these rules? And there was silence. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I, there's, I there's no like silence. Guys... There's no silence. When, when I am here, there's no silence. <laughs> So start. Um, what I would suggest 
I think it would be a good idea um, to not limit the players um, of the league and in the beginning or just to collect players and then set up the tournament. I, I felt like it was kind of uh, rushed. So game night said it will be 24 players and um, w without very, very much time for uh, getting new players and then bam, it was full and maybe it could have been um, some more players. And then I would suggest splitting it up into a veteran league and a custom league and um, would merge the leagues at, at some point so that you can grant for the custom players that they will have an easy um, PvP experience and you can grant them for the veterans a nice competition. And when, when you merge it, uh, maybe um, before the before the elimination round, um, a custom player still can win the whole league. I think yeah. one of one of the main issues I can see with that is that like mm. if you give people too much time to sign up, then the f people that sign up first they kind of forgot that they have signed up once the tournament starts. I had a, I I know as a tournament organizer myself I had that specific problem for more diamond season one. We had lots of players signing up, but since we had, you know, the tournament is going to take place in one and a half months, come that time, lots of people were like, oh yeah, I signed up, yeah, I resign. Yeah, yeah. but we, we are talking about uh, not even a month uh, since BBL2 was uh, has ended that BBL3 started, I think. Yeah, uh, that's true. Another issue that I find is that if we don't have a set number of, you know, players that are going to be like, you know, predetermined basically uh, for the tournament, then it's going to be a bit more difficult actually organizing the groups and, you know, getting everything even. And even in the elimination phase, it might be a bit of an issue. Um, it's nice having certain numbers because it makes things just easy and simple to follow and simple to do. It won't take too much time to organize a tournament, you know. And things like that can also be, you know, worth considering, I feel. Big thing we need to do, and I've talked to Karn about this, is maybe speed it up to uh, less matches. Where that two, I think all these ideas coalesce into something I'll just kind of highlight. Like two, so many PVPs. I like the ELO system where you're, you quickly get broken down into likewise competition. I think, yeah, leaving the doors open a bit longer. I think it was like, yeah, two weeks. All right, we hit it. You guys are now reserve. I can on Twitch. It's like, hey, yeah, check it out. You know, Karin's videos, uh, obviously game night, everyone else getting on the Steam forums. Hey, we got a league going on if you're interested. We won't crush you. You could, because of this wonderful ELO system, you'll be playing other new players as well, you know. I think rank five start. I think you see hear all of us saying that because we realize it's much more fair than um, zero. And I get it if you literally just bought the game. Uh, there's ways to fix that. We can just give you a file. At the we have to worry about that veteran rating thing that you had whole poker. Yeah. So I think like to there's plenty of ways to make it more interesting, feel less less unfair. Fair, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, good points to think about. People to come and then st like, what surprised me is how many left between BBL two and BBL three. That was just to me, and I guess it's because they were turned off by some things. I, I yeah. think I think so too. I talked to a lot of those players, and they were turned off by waiting time and how the organizers handled various things. And I have brought that up to the organizers, but. They are thinking that BBL three, Season 3 is a big success because we still filled it up. But, you know, it's mostly, well, I mean, at least halfway there due to Kiran Pass and my efforts. Mm. That this has I feel to like be filled. It's, it's definitely hard to get more players in, but I feel like there's a lot of players to be pulled in from the main Mordham community. I feel like there's, there's a lot of players that are maybe just like itching for a fight here and there. And um, there's a lot of players, a lot of new players um asking for advice asking to do pvp um and i feel like if you do increase the you know the kind of pool of people in the tournament that 
you know can be predetermined, then I think can not easily, but maybe pull quite a few more new players in from there. I Just, think you're yeah. right. I mean, yeah. the, the modern community generates a lot more newer players coming in than the Bodyhood League does. I think for yeah. the Bodyhood League, it's mostly people watching game nights, uh, stream and videos that uh, randomly come up on um, YouTube if you search for more time. But yeah. There are lots of other videos coming up and I find that a lot of new players, they seem to find the, the modern community channel uh, first. And I am uh, actually, since today, a moderator of that uh, channel oh. as well now. Oh, cool. very nice. So I can post pinned can messages you... and stuff. Yeah. I believe he created uh, it, right? Mm. Hmm? Marcus nice. King. Yeah, Marcus King gave me the rights to manage it. Since he has also more, more or less left and he wanted me to take over. Uh, anyway, that sort of concludes the talk. We're going to have uh, another talk later counting up the points, see if we can catch up the Kid and Pass awesome predictions and see if we can leave whole poker back there in the bottom. <laughs> um, thank you very it's much like for being so. here, uh, Enyer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, whole poker. Thanks. And thank you to Kirapa for being here as well. And uh, very much props to your awesome uh, Twitch channel as well. It's good to see you, Whole Poker and Anyer. It's been a while and hear your voices. So, Sorry about Germany. Good luck, Sweden. Enjoy the rest of the World Cup, guys. No yeah. problem. Go oh, luck, like Sweden. And nice, <laughs> nice to meet you, uh, Kirapa. All right. That's it. See you for discussion table two. Farewell.